Hello, how you doing? This is Brian from Provision Studios, and um, today I'm going to demonstrate um, a mastering session in Pro Tools using only stock Pro Tools plugins or Avid plugins. This is version 10.3.4 with um, a MacBook Pro and a song that I wrote uh, just the other day. About it's about three days old, so it's really not finished yet. But it's a it's a piano and a synth song, so it should give us a good representation of what mastering can do at a low level mix. Because I don't when I do mix in my ambient music, I tend to keep my levels low because I don't want it to be overpowering and in your face. Anyway, this should be a good example. I do want to say this, that um, mastering at home, although it is a great thing to do and you can get really good at it, it's really not like mastering in a professional mastering studio where that's all they do. They don't record. They don't really mix. The only thing they do is they get... Um, tracks from mixing houses or uh, studios that want to have that final mastering put on and all their gear the tens of thousands and hundred thousand dollars worth of gear they have in their studio is just for mastering now that's not to say that you can't get some great results at home with programs like Pro Tools and the stock plugins they got and other programs out there that uh, are used for a mastering process like uh, Isotope Ozone which I have demoed in the past uh, for this type of process. Anyway, I just wanted to sort of put that out there that this is not to, I'm not doing this video to say that this is uh, professional level mastering or professional quality mastering this is a way for you to hear your mixes how they would sound if you did send them off uh, in a ballpark a ballpark level sort of um, okay let's get started first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to explain what I got here I imported my track I have my uh, audio track which is then running into my Submix, which is a stereo auxiliary input in Pro Tools. Then I run that into a stereo print, which is a bus, which is also a stereo auxiliary input. And then I run that into a, a stereo audio track, which is my print track. And what this is doing is this is sort of my in Pro Tools bounce phase. Instead of selecting bounce to, which would be file, bounce to disk, which you can, which is fine to do. You, I like to do mine right inside of Pro Tools, where I actually print my mixes onto a stereo track. And I'll show you that when we get into that, that phase. So basically what I've got here is again I have my audio track on this channel strip right here nothing's on it all my levels are set to zero I am not doing any mixing at this point because I have already done my mixing before I got this track bounced in my session so all I'm doing now is I'm mastering for levels okay first thing I want to do is I'm going to play for you the song as I mixed it. You're going to see where my levels are right here. It's going to be across the board. Again, the signal is running through all these channels. So here is the song. Notice where my levels are. I'm nowhere close to up here, which is where we're going to end up once all these plugins are turned on.
see we're really not getting above negative 10, which is what I did. When I mixed, I kept my levels to where nothing went over negative 10. Now, that was not done with limiting. Now, I didn't, I mean, I didn't put any limiting on that session. Basically, what I did is I just pulled my faders down on each channel so that when everything was summed together into my uh, my master fader or my master uh, uh, channel strip, the, the highest peak was a negative 10. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to start instantiating some of these plugins I got on each of these channel strips. I'm going to play the track and I'm going to start adding one at a time these uh, plugins that I have. And again, these are stock plugins. These are not uh, waves. These are not isotope. These are not anything uh, McDSP. These are just what you would come across under your uh, generic Pro Tools install. First, we're going to put in the EQ37 band. Basically, what I've done here is I've rolled off the low and high end. You see right here. Although all these are on. And what you want to do is you want to make sure you're not adding here. Whatever you do EQ-wise, you do not want to add here. You got your in level, which is the signal coming in, and then the out is what's coming out of the EQ level-wise. You don't want you don't want to be adding level out of your EQ. Anyway, so basically all I'm doing here is I'm making sure I'm rolling off all of any low mud or any uh, high harshness that you really can't hear anyway. The next plugin is the um, Pro Tools Compressor Limiter. I've used the Clean Limit preset, and then I've lowered my threshold down to negative 11 decibels. And all of this is based on the preset. See, I'm, I'm getting minimal gain reduction here. Very little. Next is going to be the um, BF76 peak limiter. You see our levels just jumped up. Again, we're not doing anything on our original track. The submix here is where all of these uh, effects are working. And then it goes uh, stereo print bus into the uh, print track into our master fader. Right, now I'm going to go over to the stereo print bus with the maximum limiter. Got my threshold set at negative 6.5 decibel, which is where it's kicking in. And my ceiling is negative three decibel. I have the dither and the noise shaping turned off because I do not yet want to have any of that applied to uh, my track. Or my mix, I should say. Finally, on my, my stereo print track, I have my dither. Which you're not going to hear anything there. This is just adding dither to the mix which is always the last thing you want to do. Okay, question. Why do, am I spreading these plugins over three tracks? Quick answer, because you never want to overload a channel strip with too many plugins. You want to spread your limiting and your compression out over several tracks so that you're not having one compressor or one limiter do all of the heavy lifting or all of the work. So you basically, you limit and you compress in stages. So I do a little compression there, a little more here, and then a little more there. So no one plugin is working too hard, and it actually sounds more natural and more pleasing to the ear. And your last thing you do 
is you put in your dither at the end. And now let me show you what is being accomplished down here on my print track. Okay, I've got everything going. I've showed you all of my plugins and, and you know what they're doing. And actually, let me do an A-B for you. So you can hear, I, I showed you, I was putting them in one at a time. Let me show you the plugins uh, A and B. This is without. Again, look at look at the master bus, where my master bus goes. With with and without. Now we're up. Back down to where my original level was. Again. Every single one of these plugins, all uh, five of these plugins are found in the native install of Pro Tools. This is nothing that was purchased extra. You have these plugins in your version of Pro Tools as well. All right, now back to the print uh, print track. Basically, what I'm doing here is this is bouncing. Instead of bouncing to disk, I'm sort of bouncing into session. And this is how it works. I have the, tr the, the track armed. If I disarm the print and I hit play, you're not going to hear anything. Because everything is flowing, all signal is flowing into this print track. If I arm it for print and hit play, then I get my volume back. Okay. So basically all I'm doing here is that I'm creating a, uh, a stereo mastered WAV file. original. Here's what my mastering has done to this wave file. Notice we're not getting any peaking. There's no red lights. There's no distortion coming on. This is all being kept to negative 0.3 decibels, so it is. There's a warmth to it without that digital artifact. And that's pretty much it. Um, you could go over here to where your tracks are, and you can see this is what we just created this is the print track that is this print track see if I click off of it that's no longer highlighted if I click on that it highlights this so you have some options here you right click on that and you can see you've got export clip as files now this is normally what I do when I want to rename it you can see here now we have options file type you can do an AIFF MP3. If I had video, I could actually do a quick time bounce. Format. You could do multiple mono or stereo interleave. Bit depth. You could change your bit depth here. Sample rate. You could change sample rates. You can actually upload it or share it to your SoundCloud, SoundCloud or Gobbler account. You can choose your destination, and you got other options here: auto renaming, replace with new files, which would replace the file here in your track. Then you click the export button, and then you're going to get this, where you, where normally I would rename my file. Oops. And there, it just processed this track that I just sent. So I have a now a stereo master 
<clears throat> in my um, audio files folder that I can burn to disk in another program like uh, I've showed you before, Personas Studio One. You can use uh, a CD burning software in your operating system if you have Windows. You can use several programs, Windows Media Player and stuff like that, allow you to burn the disk. You can use iTunes. And uh, what you've accomplished here is you have taken your original track and you have maximized your volume with stock plugins or you've mastered your audio for CD. And that is all done, again, with stock plugins. All right, that's going to do it here. I appreciate you guys taking the time and watching my video. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at brianbuckaloo at yahoo.com. You can go to my website, provisionstudios.com. Or you can reply or comment to this video here on YouTube. Thank you very much and have a blessed day.